Hello and welcome everyone to our visitors from around the world. Thank you so much for making time to join us again today for our latest global webinar. And again, uh, if you are in an area that's suffering from some of the natural disasters that have been going on, for example, in Greece or in uh, North America or Haiti or any other area where you're suffering from uh, severe weather, um, we hope you're keeping safe. And um, yeah, so welcome everyone from wherever you are. And today's topic is, of course, one of the most important topics, perhaps the most important one. It's research funding. Without funding, there's no way to even keep the lights on in your laboratory. So today, to guide us through some of the pitfalls and possibilities of research funding, applying for grants, is our own friend in funding, our grant guru, Dr. Gareth Dyke. Dr. Dyke, how, how are, are you? you today? I'm well, and yourself, Scott? How's things? Everything okay? Very well. We've again, we've had some natural disasters in parts of Japan here. It's been rough um, for uh, some areas, especially in the West. Um, but um, yeah, hopefully people will will cope and pull through. How about in in Budapest, in Hungary? How are things there? Everything's good. Uh, the weather's still quite okay. So um, we have no extreme weather really here, apart from a bit of extra heat. So we're lucky, I think, at the moment. But yeah, I mean, best wishes to everybody that's listening to this from wherever you're tuning in today. It's great to see so many people, as always, for our event. It is. We've got a fantastic group of people from all around the world, as usual. Uh, so again, as uh, Gareth said, thanks to everyone for taking time out of your, your busy day. So Gareth and I are with the Edance Learning Lab, and we're part of um, Edance, who have been operating since 1995. We've been supporting researchers now for more than 25 years. And uh, Gareth and I, as I mentioned, work for the Learning Lab, which is a training portal where we work to support researchers through the entire research cycle. And we also have a series of smart tools, including our famous journal selector, my manuscript, and my protocol tools, which are all part of the Edon's premium suite of tools and training. Yeah, so if you haven't signed up yet for the Learning Lab, now's your chance. Jump on over to learning.edance.com and, and, and join us. I mean, free access. We're giving free access for two weeks as a result of your joining us for this training today. And indeed, um, if you want to listen back to the recording of this event, Scott, Right, you have to come to the Learning Lab and watch the recording of the webinar on our courses page, and we'll provide links for you at the end. So come in and uh, sign up, and uh, please uh, review today's video as many times as you like, and also look at some of the other webinar recordings that we have on hand there. Great. So I think we're ready to jump in with our training today. We're going to do it in quite, I hope, an interactive way. We hope um, there'll be chunks of me talking and you'll have lots of opportunities to ask questions as we go through our presentation um, today. And then of course, as usual, there'll be some games at the end and some free gifts as well for those of you who are joining us. So as a special thank you for joining us for our presentation today, we will be giving away some free things at the end. So stick around, don't forget, don't turn off make sure you stay with us until the end of our training presentation today we're talking about grant writing how to get that funding how to successfully win that funding in order to finance your research to finance your next research project we know that this is a big issue in research around the world of course it is we all need money in order to do our research and as our friend Pablo Picasso is famous for having said I'm one step away from becoming rich all I need is the money so we're going to be discussing how you can effectively think about funding your research and of course this webinar this training I'm sure will be useful maybe not immediately but if you sign up on the learning lab as Scott was just saying you'll be able to access this training presentation for yourself, for your students, for your colleagues in the future when, of course, it comes time potentially to write a funding application. And we know, of course, it's almost the end of August and the, the funding season is coming up relatively soon in lots of different parts of the world. So you may very well be thinking to yourself, 
hmm, I'm unsure about which question to seek research funding for. I've got lots of ideas, but I don't know which of my many brilliant ideas as a researcher is going to be the best one for funding. You may have a proposal written, but you need perhaps some support with the editing or the illustrations, or indeed one of our most popular services, get your grant application pre-reviewed by one of our many subject area experts. Perhaps you're starting work right now on a funding proposal and you need some guidance. We can provide that. And perhaps, indeed, you just need some support, some consultation to come up with a fundable idea. If you're stuck, then this training is aimed at, aimed at helping. Of course, we hope with all of our training that we can help researchers around the world become more effective with all of their writing and publishing all throughout that research journey. But perhaps you just need a chat with one of our teams. So, of course, we can help. You can get in touch with us. Drop us a line at the email address on this slide, global at edance.com. And indeed, we will be able to come back and help you with any of these issues. Maybe it's a question that we haven't listed on this slide. Maybe it's a question that comes up as we talk through the rest of our presentation today. But don't be shy. We at Edance, at the Learning Lab, we are here to help. So all of this, of course, is about helping you to become an effective communicator in English. We know it's difficult in a second or third or fourth language. But as you think about writing a funding application, as you think about gaining funding for your next proposal, really, the most important thing to do is, of course, to convince that grant agency that your study, your work deserves to be funded. So you're going to have to have a relevant problem. We'll talk about that in a little bit. You're going to have to logically organize your research plan. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And you're going to have to learn to effectively communicate your ideas in order to convince the people who are going to be evaluating your next funding application that it deserves to be funded. So that's what this is all about, helping you to be more effective at that. So we'll get going. This presentation, it's divided into three sections. To begin with, what kinds of things to think about as a researcher for your next funding application, for your next grant application before you begin. And as with all of our training events, we want your feedback. We want your input. It's not just about me and Scott. It's about you, our researcher colleagues from around the world. So in a few minutes time, we're going to throw the floor open as we talk about beginning that grant application process. So you can think now, perhaps you are struggling with a grant application at the moment, grant preparations, Put those comments, put those questions into the chat box. We'll come up with some questions in a short while. We'll be talking um, in our first Q&A. So are you thinking potentially about coming up with a fundable idea? That might be something you want to ask us about. Not sure which idea to seek funding for. Have a think and maybe it's going to help if you put those questions into the chat box. And Scott and I will come back in just a few minutes and try to answer them. But before you begin, before you start working on your next grant application, you need to have a think about who is going to be evaluating your grant application. Is it a multidisciplinary grant? So does the contents need to be clear to people outside your immediate field? Is it an international grant application? So are there potentially cultural considerations to put into that proposal? And what are the age groups of the people who are going to be looking at the proposal? Is it going to be you know, evaluated by older people who potentially might be more conservative? Is it going to be evaluated by a younger funding panel? These are key things to think about, as well as what is going to be evaluated. Three important aspects of grant applications, contents of grant applications that review panels. And we talk to lots of review panel members all over the world at Edance. We were talking just the other day to a colleague who sits on one of the national Japanese funding agencies. And she came back to us with a number of pieces of feedback. Does the study need to be done? Will the study be conducted well when people assess 
proposals. They think about these aspects and how will the study be useful? So before you begin that writing process, does your study need to be done? Will the study be conducted well? Of course, that's related to the method section. We'll talk about that in a moment. And how will your study prove useful? These are the kinds of things that not just in Japan, but of course, all over the world, grant funding evaluation panels are asked to look at when they evaluate proposals. So these are key things to keep in mind as you begin your writing planning process. You need a problem. You need a question. You need to thoroughly evaluate the literature. You need to be on top of your research. I'm sure you are. You're all effective and researchers. But it's key, of course, to identify those knowledge gaps. Get in there and determine a question, a knowledge gap within your field, within your research area that needs work. And that can be your subject for your next proposal. So that's got to be focused get it down into one sentence, it's got to be something that's not yet addressed, or it's got to be something that's already been looked at by other colleagues in your research area, but not successfully. If you struggle, by the way, with identifying a knowledge gap in your own particular field, that's something that we do all the time at Edant. So again, global at edance.com, give us an email, get in touch, we can certainly help you to identify a knowledge gap in your field that could be a potential area for a grant application in the future, one of our many popular services. So thinking about writing, you've got your question, you know now where the grant's going to be going, you're thinking about what the things are that the panel evaluating your grant are going to be assessing, three key points to show the funding agency. It's got to be realistic. You have to have a solution to a problem. You've got to be cost effective, minimize that research waste, and you've got to show the funding agency that you're competent. You and your team are able to complete the project as written. So importantly, get feedback before you start the writing process. Get feedback from colleagues before you even start to write. Get feedback from one of our team at Edance. We can provide that service for you as well. So find a couple of non-competitive colleagues, introduce them to the topic and the objectives of your proposal, set a date, give them some time to give you feedback, and you can then revise your proposal based on the feedback that those non-competitive colleagues provide. Of course, we can do that for you as well. Of course, our pre-grant application, pre-peer review service, we can help you and then you can be in better shape. You can bulletproof that grant proposal before you send it into the funding agency. And my number one piece of advice, I got this from a colleague at the university where I used to work back in the UK, very successful guy, lots and lots of money, lots and lots of Pablo Picasso money, lots and lots of grants that he had gotten funded. If you can use images in your grant proposal rather than words, use pictures because that's a much better way to get your message across, a much better way to convince your reviewers that your work is going to be interesting and successful. So in my case, wrote lots of grants about birds, ecology, climate change, wing evolution. I used to use in my grant applications, lots of pictures of birds. Rather than writing lots of things about birds, why not show some pictures and that will show your proposal in a favorable light. People will be able to engage much more effectively with your questions. So we have reached now the end of our first section. That's the kinds of things that we encourage you to think about before you start to write. I hope that I see actually that there's lots of questions coming in. So we're gonna um, take a short moment now. I'm gonna hand back over to Scott and we're gonna see like if we can help with some of those grant preparation questions that you may have. Scott, how are you doing? Great, thank you, Gareth. Uh, the questions are coming in, and so far we've got some excellent questions. We'll start with a question from Anthony, and this is such a good question. The question is, uh, how does a researcher get their first grant? It seems you can't get funding until you've got funding. Do you have any advice for absolute beginners to get their first grant? Well, that's a catch-22, isn't it? You need to show that you've gotten funding to get funding. That is a fantastic question and thank you very much for it, Anthony. We always, like as researchers, having been through that PhD, postdoc 
into that first academic position cycle. How are you going to, and that's something we're going to talk about in this presentation. One of the ways you can demonstrate that your proposal is going to work is to show in your proposal some data that you've already collected or some track records. So how can you do that if you're just getting started, if you're working on your PhD or your master's? My advice is to have a look around in your field for small grants, travel grants, grants to attend conferences, grants to do small pieces of work. So in my field, there's quite a lot of small travel grants, small grants for field work, for example, and apply for those as a PhD student, as an early stage postdoc. Nobody's expecting you to immediately, as a young master's student or PhD student, be able to get like national funding, hundreds of thousands of yen or hundreds of thousands of dollars for your research, but you can, as a young researcher, build up a track record that shows that you can successfully generate funding, even if that's small amounts. So be aware of the small grants that are available in your field, travel grants, conference attendance grants, things like that, and apply for those. Keep track of those on your CV, because as you move up and go through the stages of your career, showing that you are looking for funding and are successful, even at winning small grants, very important because that will help um, to demonstrate um, your competence when you go to apply for larger grant applications. So I hope that helps. Thanks for the great question, Anthony. Great question. Yes, thanks, Anthony. And uh, this is a question from uh, Rohit. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Sorry. And the question is, how do you arrange a grant proposal when the main point of the research is completely new? For example, a novel function of genes that's never known before. That's another great question. Um, and um, there are certain kinds of grants, of course, that are specifically looking for completely new and groundbreaking areas of research, like blue sky research, like complete steps away from what's considered like, you know, currently accepted thinking. But in most cases, like even if you think that your grant proposal is completely new and it's something that's never been done before, you're going to have to show in the proposal that it's both novel, that's important, as we'll talk about in a minute, but that it is achievable at the same time. And so there's a number of tricks that we'll talk about later in our presentation today that will both help you emphasize the novelty of your proposal, which is of course what you think you have, a new gene or a new approach to this particular um, problem, this particular kind of uh, gene therapy, let's say, for example, but at the same time, you've got to convince those reviewers that this is something that's doable. So new and at the same time manageable is a difficult trick, and it's one of the keys to successful grant writing. So we'll come back to that shortly, but I hope that that helps um, to get us started. That's a great question. Thank you so much for it. Thank you. Great question, yes, thank you. And uh, here's another good question. This is from Fahad, and the question is, um, it's, it's said that you should always ask for more funds than are actually required. Should we draft a budget which is very accurate, or should we make a slightly exaggerated budget to factor in for that? Yeah, Great that's question. another fantastic question, and we're gonna come on and talk about that in a little bit in this presentation, but indeed, one of the things that people will be evaluating when they look at your proposal budget is, is the budget reasonable and appropriate for the amount of work that you intend to do? While at the same time, it is a good idea to you know, put a little bit more budget into your budget request if you can, you don't wanna go crazy with that. If you don't need to hire 20 people to do the work, you only need to hire two people to do the work, but you ask for salaries for 20 people, then of course that's going to be a huge black mark against you when you come to be evaluated by your funding agency. So I would say look at your funding agency, look at what kinds of numbers they usually are funding, get a ballpark idea for a what kinds of awards this funding agency is usually making. And that should be clear from you know, the funding agency website or from previously funded 
proposals. So, for example, if your funding agency is usually giving out grants that are $10,000 each, you won't get your work funded if you go in with a proposal for $200,000. So keep it reasonable, and we'll talk about budgeting in a little bit. But thanks very much for that great question, and I hope that I hope that we were able to help. Thank you so much. Great, thanks for your question. And we have so many great questions coming in. We'll try to get to all of them. And by the way, if you ask a question and we're not able to answer live today, um, we'll get back to you afterwards the best that we can. Um, there's so many good questions here. So uh, let's go on to the next one here, Gareth. Um, this question is, oh, this is a good one. Um, I hope I'm saying this correctly. This is from uh, Debasish. And the question is, what are some funding agencies that fund internationally without a lot of paper obstacles? Wow, that's a great question. Um, and we actually have a database that we're developing at EdAnce to help colleagues with exactly that kind of question. So um, I need to know a bit more information. We need to know, our team needs to know a bit more information about you and about your research area and about your country of origin, okay, in order that we can provide you with some good advice to answer that particular question. Because there are many mechanisms that you can use to, to move around, to do research in different countries, to move from one area to another as a postdoc or as a PhD student or even as a senior academic. But we do need to know from you where you are now, where you'd like to go, and um, a little bit about your research area. So, I mean, hopefully you can email us global at edants.com and we can provide some more support around that question. But that's a great question. I'm sure lots of people listening to us today will have a similar ask to that. Perhaps you're a PhD student or a postdoc and you're thinking, hey, I want to go to the US or Japan or China or Europe for my next career stage. Well, get in touch with us. We can certainly provide you with help in order to identify the mechanisms to do that. So thank you very much for that question. Great question, thank you. Great. Thanks, Gareth. And I'm going to combine two uh, or three related questions here uh, because they're all somewhat overlapping and they're all, uh, I think, very relevant here. And the overall question is, how much preliminary data should you include in your grant application? And perhaps a related question is, to what extent should you do, to what extent should you conduct your literature review and include that? So in other words, how much preliminary content do you really need? Yeah, that's another great question. And, and the, the short answer to that question is you need to have enough preliminary data and enough preliminary content in your proposal to convince the evaluating panel that your proposal is going to work. This is going to be a successful um, project. It's very unusual to get research funded um, that's completely speculative, that's completely like off the wall, that's completely like a shot in the dark, you know? So you have to show your funding agency that this is going to work. Has to be interesting, has to be novel, has to be new, but you need to have enough preliminary data in there. And that's a question, you know, how long is a piece of string? But you have to show that what you're gonna be asking for money for is gonna work. And also, to answer the second part of that question, of course, show in your background, in the summary, whatever that section's called, in your proposal, the state of the art, as they like to call it in European Union funding applications, where you demonstrate that you're on top of the field, that you have that understanding of the research area. So that's the literature review. Of course, you don't want to go crazy, but you do want to show, just as you would in an academic article, that your citations are broad, they're international, they're across a range of ages, so from the beginning to the end of that particular research question. But broadly citing, keeping it succinct, of course, citing review papers where you can, but showing again the panel that you are the expert, you're on top of the field. So again, great question. Thanks very much for it. Brilliant. Great, thank you, Gareth. Um, we'll try to maybe field a, two more questions maybe for this section, and then we'll move on to section two. Is that enough? Okay. Maybe enough time? Absolutely. Okay, let's yeah. try it. Here's another great question for us, Gareth. It's, oh, this is an interesting question. Uh, how, or is it possible to know who will review your grant proposal? Or how will you know? 
that depends that's a great question it depends upon the funding agency it depends upon the system within which you're working it depends upon the grant i mean lots of funding applications will give you the opportunity to suggest reviewers and so just as you would with an academic paper make sure you suggest reviewers that you know are going to be favorable towards your work so how to do that well show your proposal talk about your ideas with your international colleagues but again like i would say that depends on the funding agency that depends on um the area so you know like yes and no i mean you may be able to tell who's on the panel evaluating a grant from looking at the website or by talking to colleagues but you know generally speaking if you're able to suggest reviewers talk to people beforehand colleagues internationally tell them that you're applying for a postdoc grant to move to japan for example make sure they support it that they think the idea is good and then they're likely to write you a favorable um, review so again great question we're getting some fantastic questions already today aren't we scott it's brilliant they are amazing yeah they're great so keep them coming and we'll try to answer all of them today and if we can't get to your question we'll try to get back to you after the event so thanks everyone and, and keep the questions coming great so we'll continue with our section two. Now you've thought about starting the proposal process and you've come up with a good idea. Maybe you've talked to us at edance. Maybe you've emailed global at edance.com. Maybe you've talked to us and we've helped you with that question. Maybe your colleagues have helped you with that question. Now it's time to think about how you can logically structure and write the next section of your proposal how you can do that so don't forget again that we're going to do another question session at the end of this short part of the presentation so if you've got questions this time around about the actual proposal writing process effective grant writing perhaps you're starting work on a proposal right now and you need some guidance then please drop them into the chat box i will get started by saying that just like writing an academic paper, just like writing anything really in English, your key here is to be readable, to be easily understood. So short sentences, limiting your sentences to 15 to 20 words and keeping one idea per sentence if possible. And where possible again, of course, perhaps even more important in grant proposals compared to academic papers, using the active voice being simpler, more direct and making your work easier to read. It's all part of the battle to make sure that your ideas come across in your proposal. So additional tips that we have to improve your readability. Don't be too repetitive, but you do need to identify key phrases in your grant aims that you then repeat throughout your grant proposal. So those key messages, what your work is going to show, what the importance of your research is what the key breakthrough is what the difference this work is going to make to ordinary people perhaps repeat these throughout your grant proposal keep the structure parallel we'll talk about this in a moment but your research problem has to tightly marry to your objectives as you bring in your different paragraphs of your grant you have to show that you are the expert so be assertive and justify the statements that you make and of course be consistent use the same terminology throughout i know this can be a problem just like again with writing papers if you've got multiple authors on a grant application it's a big collaborative proposal good idea to designate somebody to do all the writing all of the editing so that the proposal looks consistent to the reviewers that's one way that they'll be negative they'll see lots of different you know ways of writing lots of different spellings lots of different acronyms the proposal looks inconsistent then you're going to get negative score so starting off the writing start your proposal with a thought-provoking statement what's the question what's the question what's the big issue and why is that something that needs to be addressed where's the conflict What's the question? What are you going to be addressing? And why is that question so important? And of course, you've got questions in your own research area, but you have to know why those questions are important to be answered. That's the key to success in effective grant writing. Of course, lots of questions will come into your head that you think are interesting. 
but you are potentially quite narrowly focused because you're focused on your own particular research area. Making sure that that question that you want to ask with your proposal is interesting to the reviewers is key. So why? What's the conflict? And here is the essential information that goes into an effective grant. The plan, the summary, the background, the purpose, the implications, and then of course all that extra additional information depending on the funding agency of course, but most funding agencies around the world, most grant application providing bodies tend to ask for the same kinds of things. A budget, how are you going to disseminate the results, what are your credentials as a researcher, and where are those potential supporters either provided with the proposal itself or later in the review process. So you've got your well-defined research question, break that down in your proposal into a number of smaller, more concise questions or work packages as they're often called in grant writing. So you've got your overarching question, you will break that overarching question down into several concise work packages. They will marry to the timetable of the grant. They will each be achievable on their own. And they show that you are establishing focus in your writing. You can't have a work package that's dependent completely on the others because then a reviewer will say, well, what happens if the first part of the grant is unsuccessful? What's going to happen with the rest of the money? So in your summary, which is usually a one pager or two to four paragraphs, review the background, state the problem and objectives, describe your methodology, give the reviewer, the reader, those expected results, based on what you already know, based on that data that you've already collected. And don't forget to tell people about the significance and implications of the work. It's difficult to write an effective proposal summary. Don't worry, we are of course always here to help. So you can get in touch with us if you need help with the proposal summary writing and editing. So think about this from the perspective of why your study needs to be done course we've talked about that already, how you will perform the study and what the key outcomes and information, the implications are going to be. So your purpose and background, your research methods and the expected results and significance. These are key things to include in your summary, key things that you need to know about as you begin that writing process. And just with a paper of course, just like the abstract of your academic papers, it's important to remember that this is often the only bit that the grant committee is going to read, maybe before making a decision, let's hope not, but potentially before sending your grant out for further review. So what are people going to learn from your research project? Why is this piece of information or pieces of information worth knowing? And how are your conclusions going to be validated? Three key questions to think about as you put together your proposal summary. And this is the shape of that section. You've got your general introduction, you give the reader the current state of the field, and then you boil it down to a problem. So a key question broken down into several packages within the proposal itself. What's the reason for doing this research? And how does that relate to a specific problem in your field. So your background, introduce that broadly to set the context. Why is this work interesting? Why is the topic important and relevant? And why is this work worth funding? Perhaps the most important question from the reviewer's perspective, from the funding agency's perspective, why should we give this person the funding to do this work? Why is the topic that they're asking for money to do relevant and important. So of course, as one of our questioners asked a moment ago, in your literature review, what's been done before? What are the current solutions? Where are the problems, the limitations in these solutions? And where are the active debates? This is the gap part of the proposal. This is where you're going to show your reviewers that you have a question that needs to be answered. You've got a gap that's not been addressed before. You've got an important but solvable problem. And you've got that boiled down into a focused one sentence in your proposal, the question, the important but solvable problem in your research. So 
that is, I hope, some insights into the writing section of structuring your proposal. Let's see if you have any comments. Let's see if you have any questions about what we've just talked about. Scott? Great. Thank you, Gareth. Uh, still lots of great questions coming in. Um, here's a question from Joshua. And Joshua asks, how do you avoid sounding over ambitious in your proposal? Uh, Joshua says that he was told this some time back, that his, his proposal was over ambitious. How do you set the right tone for a proposal, Gareth? That's a great question, Joshua. Thank you for that. That's really interesting. Um, and of course, it's very hard to do this effectively. I mean, of course, you want to sound ambitious and you want people to think this is an ambitious but manageable proposal when they read it, when they get it for review. So again, like the key to this really is to talk to other people who have successfully received funding from that particular grant agency in the past, I would say. Like one of the best pieces of advice that I would give to researchers who are about to submit to a funding agency or about to write a proposal to a particular funding agency is don't do that blind. Go and get some previously funded proposals that have been successful recently, hopefully, at that agency, at that funding agency. So you can see the kinds of things that that funding agency has recently, previously funded. So you can pitch your proposal in the same kind of way that has been done recently and successfully. So that will help you to, I think, um, balance that innovativeness with that um, ambitiousness, with that doability that you need to have in your funding proposals. Of course, if you're way over ambitious, that's gonna come through immediately to the reviewers. So thanks for that great question. That's a really difficult balance to strike. But again, like we may be able to help. If you get in touch with us, we can put you in direct contact with a consultant from our team who would then talk to you one-on-one -on -one about, about your next funding proposal. So thanks for that great question. Really a good one. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Gareth. Here's another great question. And this uh, is a callback to um, our earlier webinar where we looked at cultural bias. So here's a question related to cultural bias. And Folake asks, how do you redu reduce the cultural, I guess, content, I guess you would say, in your grant application proposal? And I guess this is to try to avoid any risk of cultural bias from reviewers. Again, that's a fantastic question and uh, a tricky one um, to address. Of course, there's going to be bias as with everything that we do as academics. One of the problems with grant writing and sending grant proposals to funding agencies for review is that very often, almost always, you don't have the option of blinding the proposal to the reviewers as you would do with an academic paper. So. Um, my advice is to, if you can, suggest reviewers. If you've got that option, make sure you take advantage of it. Um, many grant funding agencies will be asking you to propose some reviewers. Don't just think, well, hey, like, who do I, who do I know who would potentially be a good reviewer and, and put them into the proposal? Actually talk to those individuals that you're thinking of proposing as reviewers before you submit. So you, maybe you know somebody in the UK, maybe you know an academic in your field in Australia, I don't know, but like before you put the proposal in, it's very important for you to have talked to them, to have sent them some elements of the proposal, the idea, the summary, so that they can comment and so that you can be sure that they're gonna be supportive when they get asked by the funding agency to provide a review. And that I think is, really with grant applications that are going out internationally and one of the best things that you can do because as we've mentioned you don't have that option often of just being blind to the reviewer so great question i totally feel um uh, your your pain with this kind of stuff but yeah like thank you and again like um great question great question thank you
Great. Uh, thanks for the question. Here's here's a great uh, mechanics of writing question, and it's it's a simple one, but it's a it's an excellent question. Normally, they put the title in terms of a statement. Can you put the title of your grant application or your your I guess it's your question in terms of a question, statement or question? Um, yes, of course. Like you can make a you can make it into a question in a grant application as well. I mean, that's much less commonly done than in paper writing. There's a, of course, like a big trend in academic paper writing and lots of people pose a question with their academic paper titles as a hook to get people interested in reading the paper and finding out the answer. Of course, think about your target audience with a grant application. That's not as many people as possible as it would be with an article, with an academic paper. You are writing your grant proposal for the review panel, for the reviewers, for the evaluators. You're not writing your grant application for as many people as possible to read it. So be careful with structuring a grant application title as a question because you pretty much immediately have to tell the reviewers what the potential answer to that question is going to be. So much less often done in grant writing, you, not to say that you can't do it, but be aware of who your readers are when you're putting your proposals together. Your evaluators are not going to appreciate being left hanging throughout the whole of the grant proposal to find out what the likely answer is going to be, as you would when you're putting together a paper. So, yeah, just a few people are the key target audience when writing a grant application. Thanks for that fantastic question. Great question. Great question, thank you. And here's another writing related question. And this has actually been asked by several of our guests today. So I'm putting them all into one. And we mentioned earlier that we should conduct a thorough literature review. So the question is how thorough? For example, how many articles roughly? Uh, how long should it be in terms of word count? Any thoughts on length of literature review and breadth? of literature review, Gareth? Yeah, fantastic question. That depends on the field, that depends on the question, your research area, because of course if you're working in a research area where there's lots and lots and lots and lots of previous work, your literature review, your background, your state of the art in your proposal will necessarily be more comprehensive than if you're working at the cutting edge of a new research area where there's only been a handful of previous studies so it's very context dependent and for that reason there's no hard and fast answer we can't say you need to have a hundred papers and um you know 500 words or something it also is going to depend on the length of the proposal and don't forget that different grant applications have different word counts word limits so you need to check those carefully before you begin to write one of the ways that your proposal will get immediately in trouble from some of the big funding agencies internationally, the European Union, for example, they're going to check it when it gets submitted that everything's correctly formatted, everything's in the right place, everything conforms to all of the word limits and so on. I know it's the European Union. You'll get rejected if you don't accurately conform to the grant guidelines. That, by the way, is another service that we provide at Edance. You can send us your proposal, tell us your funding agency, and we'll work to make sure that your proposal is not just as good as it can be, but that it fits to all of the requirements of your funding agency. So if you've only got um, half a page to put in your background, your state of the art, then of course it's gonna be a lot shorter, has to be a lot more succinct than if you've got a lot more space. So context dependent, subject area dependent, and grant application uh, word count dependent. But thanks for the great question. Thanks for it, great. Great, thanks for your question and thank you, Gareth. And maybe we should move on to our third section. We have uh, still fantastic questions coming in That's and many good. of those relate to our next section here, Gareth, about our purpose and plan for our research. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah we'll get to those let's, questions let's, in a few minutes. Let's crack on. So we've talked so far in our session today um, about your preparations to um, put a grant together, the things that you do before you begin that writing process, coming up with ideas, developing your ideas, and thinking about who your reviewers are going to be, how the grant's going to be evaluated. In section two, we talked briefly 
about the writing, effective writing. Now we'll talk about your plan, because of course, lots of people think, lots of people get into the mindset that really getting the money is the most important thing. But of course, that's not the most important thing. Doing the work, once you've gotten the funding, is the most important thing, especially if you want to get funding and get grant support in the future. So very important to think about your research plan and about your research purpose, not just in the context of winning the money. You've got to do the work once you win the money, of course. So we'll have a third Q&A in a few minutes time when we get to the end of this section. But again, perhaps you've got a proposal written and you need some pre-review. Perhaps one of our Japanese colleagues is listening to this presentation and preparing to submit something to one of the National Japanese Research Council deadlines in September. So maybe you'd get in touch with us and we can give you a thorough, effective pre-review, help you to make sure your proposal has the maximum chance of getting successfully funded. So in a minute, we'll talk about that, determining your purpose, but of course, your study purpose, very, very important. This is not a fishing expedition. You've got to have concrete goals. You've got to use those goals, as we talked about already, to evaluate your progress, your work packages, breaking down that big question of your grant into a number of smaller questions and relating those questions to manageable, specific goals. So you don't want to do something that's too big, that's not well conceived. You do want to make sure that your purpose is clear. So who are the beneficiaries and how are they going to be affected? Who's going to gain from your grant being funded? Who's going to get benefit from your work being successfully supported? And how will they be affected? Nobody really is interested very much in funding research that has no benefit. So you have to show that in your proposal. How will your study advance the field? Will it help to answer a current debate? Will it establish a new idea or an alternative viewpoint on an existing idea? Are you building on work that's come before? What's the question? What's the purpose of your grant application and of course of your ongoing research work as an individual, as the leader of a research team. When people ask you what's the purpose of what you're doing, you have to be ready to answer that in a very specific way. So logically describing your methodology when putting a grant proposal together is very important because evaluators, reviewers, are going to look at the objectives, they're going to look at the methodology, they're going to ask who is going to be used? What data are you going to use in this proposal? How's the work going to be done? What techniques are going to be used? And perhaps most importantly of all, how is the work going to be analysed? How's the data analysis going to be carried out? So what will be done? How will it be done? And how is your data analysis going to be carried out? So you're looking for innovation, looking for competency, and of course, if you've got lots of technical details, if you've got lots of relevant technical details that those four or five grant evaluators, those four or five people reviewing your project are not going to need to necessarily read, don't bog down the main text of the proposal with lots of technical details. Put those into an appendix so that those are areas that can be read if necessary, but don't have to be read by those evaluators. So as we talked about already before, when you put your proposals together in terms of your purpose, showing that you have that reason to be given funding, you're looking to have some preliminary results. These, of course, could be pilot studies. They validate your hypotheses. They show that you have resources. They demonstrate expertise and technical efficacy, and they show that the proposed plan is interesting. And of course, having data is a good thing because you can always use that data to justify your collaborations. If you're working with other groups around the world, you can say in the proposal, well, our inclusion as a research group from Hungary, let's say, is that we have these data that we're going to contribute to the overall research plan. So 
you've got your significance, your expected results. This is based on logic, based on previous publications. You're showing implications and future directions. So show those reviewers that you've got some data that they can expect that this proposal, when funded, is going to lead to more significant outcomes that are relevant for ordinary people, that there's going to be benefit to the research. And you've got those implications in there and you're also showing that you're a thought leader in your research area there's going to be future work that comes from this funded proposal so don't be shy about talking about that as well if this work is funded we're going to accomplish the objectives one two three four but we're also going to raise a number of future directions for work in the future reviewers in terms of your study purpose and your research plan, we'll also be looking to see that you are open about your limitations. How are you going to control for the limitations in your work, the study design, the data analysis? These help to establish your expertise in your field because, of course, you've thought about your limitations. You've thought about what might go wrong, the data analysis, the study design, you are showing that you are an expert. You've got that necessary expertise to complete the project. You should be funded. And talking about funding, the budget, as one of our questionees asked a moment ago, the budget is very important. I used to put together proposals, do the budget at the last minute, throw a few numbers down in a spreadsheet, they would never get funded. You've got to be open and you've got to be realistic and you've got to consider what is your project actually going to cost. Review the guidelines of the grant to determine what they're actually funding. Lots of people make this mistake. They ask for things in their proposals that the funding agency specifically says that they're not going to fund. For example, equipment or travel. Have a careful read of the guidelines for your funding agency and make sure you don't ask for things that they're not prepared to fund. Now, as we talked about, equipment and travel are two clear examples, but salaries, operating costs, consumables, by that we mean anything that you're going to use, paper, phone calls, internet access, those additional costs, those overheads that go into the grant and show your costs in a transparent way in a table. So. Those are some key insights from our experience talking to researchers around the world about putting their plan and purpose into their proposals. So very important. We are now going to come back. Scott's going to jump back in. We're going to answer a few more of your questions. But let me just quickly say that we are always here to help, especially with these kinds of particularly tricky areas of research. You may not have that many opportunities to get a grant successfully funded. And as a successful researcher, you need to get grants successfully funded, to get promoted, to get a postdoc, to build your research group. So why not get in touch with us? Here's an email address again that you can write to. Get in touch with us at EdAnts. We will happily give you a free consultation session. Talk to one of our experts about your ideas, about your next grant application, about how we can help you to be more successful writing and winning funding. Scott, how are we doing with the questions? Great, thanks Gareth. Yes, it's so difficult to cover everything in a little one hour webinar. So if you have any questions, please reach out to our experts and uh, we're always happy to listen to you and hear your questions and see if there's a way that we can help you. Um, fantastic questions coming in. So many of these questions relate to purpose and plan. Some of them also relate back to some of our earlier topics today. So we'll go through them one by one. Um, here's a general but very important question. And this is from Coyote. And the question is, how do you find the right funding agencies for your grant proposal? That's a great question. How do you find the right funding agencies for your grant proposal? Again, depends on the subject area. So my first piece of advice would be to talk to more senior colleagues in your subject area, colleagues perhaps at your university, your supervisor, your research group leader, people at other universities around the world working in the same subject areas and ask them, you know, where are you getting your funding from? Is it coming from this charity? Is it coming from this international agency? Is it coming from this government agency? 
for example. So each field will be different. Um, there are databases that you can access to get um, this kind of information, again, we can help you if we know a little bit more information about where you're from, where you're located, what kind of work you're doing, and what kind of projects you want to get funded. So, you know, please get in touch with us. We certainly can help with those kinds of questions, absolutely. But talk to colleagues, talk to senior colleagues and see where they've gotten funding from in the past. Often people put these kinds of things on their CVs. So, Go to the websites of leading colleagues in your field, download their CV and have a look on there to see like where they've gotten funding because people like to show off, people like to tell you about their successes and so you'll be able to find out a lot of that information by digging around on, on, the, on the profiles of colleagues in your field. Great question, thank you for it. Great, thanks for your question. And here's another excellent question. And this actually relates to our slides. We had some realia on our slides pointing to an example study about a specific geographic area, rural areas of Saudi Arabia. And so one of our uh, guests today asks the question, how do you package ideas that have local importance or local relevance, but might seem trivial in other parts of the world? In fact, this might even be the basis of your grant application being thrown out. How do you make those local studies relevant on a global scale? Fantastic question. That's a great question. And of course, um, many of us face that exact problem. We're doing local research, but to get funding for that local research, we have to demonstrate an internationally relevant context. So how do you do that? Well, you've got to show that the results and the insights that you gain from your local study are going to be relevant to a much broader audience. So if I'm doing, let's imagine I'm doing some sampling from a lake in Ireland, which is what I used to spend a lot of time doing, I've got to show in my grant proposal that if I'm going to get money from the European Union to continue to do lake sampling in Ireland, that result, that outcome, the insights that we will gain from the data that we'll collect from Irish lakes is going to be more broadly relevant. And of course, you have to link your research then to bigger questions. So in this case, climate change, a lot of the work that we've done, for example, with birds and ringing and finding out the migration patterns of birds that live here in Hungary during the summer is related to climate change as well, because we know where they go, how far they fly, but the information that we gain from understanding that with our colleagues actually in Egypt, which is the place where the birds from some of the rivers in Hungary go during the winter, has to be related then to wider international questions. So that, I think, is the key thing to do. You're collecting local data, but why is that local data much more broadly relevant? Where where, which other areas, which bigger questions can it be related to? So thank you for the great question. I hope my answer was helpful, not too uh, long, but yeah, thank you very much for the question. Great, thanks for your question, yes. And we've got uh, several more great questions here. Let's see if we can get to one or two more of them, shall we, Gareth? We'll try and squeeze some more in. Um, here's a great thank question you. from from Sambuda. And the question is, uh, uh, Public, number of publications versus your impact, your impact score, uh, which of these would have the, the most positive impact on your grant proposal? Um, I, think, I think both are important to demonstrate in the funding application. In that section of the funding application where you may have the opportunity to talk about yourself, often funding proposals include like a personal statement or a summary of your research track record, okay? so. Each of your outputs, each of your publications has to be talked about, has to be sold, has to be discussed in terms of its relevance and impact for the particular funding agency or the particular project that you're, um, that you're applying for. So it's easier to justify and show a strong track record if you've got lots of high impact factor papers. That's okay, that's great. If you're not in that position and you're applying for funding, you have to find ways to, to show your relevance, to show that you're a leader in the field by using the publications that you 
that you have. And there are a number of tricks that you can use to do that. Again, we can certainly help you with that, like to make sure that you're writing a strong personal statement. It's very difficult actually to write a great personal statement about yourself. And that's a real trick. So um, yeah, again, like I encourage you to get in touch with us because all of your papers, if they've been peer reviewed, published in international journals, are important and they show that you're an active, relevant researcher. So yeah, great question. Thank you for that question. Great, thank you for your question. And a somewhat related question. This question is from Fahad, uh, Dr. Abida. And the question is, is it a good idea to include the names of influential researchers and organizations as collaborators to provide some more uh, sort of uh, authenticity or, or credibility to my grant application? Well, if you can, it's not going to hurt. So if you can, I would say that that's a good idea. Um, if the proposal that you're writing allows for that, then, then why not? I mean, of course, you have to, you can't just add partners to grant applications for no reason, though. You've got to add partners to grant applications and then show in the application what value that partner is going to add to the proposal, to the question. So, I mean, of course, it's going to be impressive if I write a grant application and I include the World Health Organization on there as a partner, but the reviewers are going to ask, why? Why has Gareth included the World Health Organization on his grant application as a partner? What value is there in doing that to helping Gareth and his team answer this particular research question. So reviewers, you see, will see through any attempts to pad out the proposal with big names, famous organizations. They want to see that those big names, those famous organizations are actually going to make a contribution um, to the study. So that's something I think to definitely keep in mind when you, when you think about doing that. Great. Thanks, Gareth, and thanks for your question. Maybe we've got time for just one more. Shall we squeeze in another question, Gareth? Still Absolutely. got some energy left. These hey, are all excellent hey. questions. Um, here's, oh, actually, this is one I was interested in myself. Um, uh, here's a quick one. Uh, do you have any advice for applying for PhD scholarships? Absolutely. That's another great question. Um, yes. Um, First thing to think about when you think about applying for PhD scholarships is where and who, which lab, which research group um, you're going to be wanting to work with and for. So my first, I mean, first thing to do when you're thinking about applying for PhD positions, PhD scholarships, is to identify where you're going to be trying to go and which research team you're going to be trying to work with. And then that will give you like, um, lots of um, steps in the right direction towards identifying how you can fund that. So first you need to have some targets um, um, organized which research groups you want to work for. Get in touch with those potential supervisors. Talk to people. Of course, it's going to dramatically increase your chances of getting, I don't know, a Fulbright scholarship to go work in the US if you've already made contact and opened a discussion and talked with your potential supervisor got their support for that proposal. So that's a first step. Identify where you'd like to go, who you'd like to work with, talk to those supervisors, they will help you to identify places where you could go to apply for funding to come to work in their research team. And there's no problem with getting in touch with lots of different people, that's expected. That just shows that you're um, uh, considering all of your options. So go and talk to lots of different potential PhD supervisors, if you have a strong track record, they'll be interested, I'm sure, in, in, in supporting you to come and work in their group. So great question. I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much for it. Great. And thanks to everyone for your questions. And uh, sorry if we could not get to every one of your questions today, but we'll try to follow up with them the best that we can. And for those of you who are interested in playing a very quick review quiz, just to check how you are paying attention today during Gary's presentation, we're going to post a game here at the end. So for those of you who are busy and need to get on with your day or your evening, uh, of course, uh, no need to stay behind. But those of you who want to stay with us and play a quick game, we'll post the link here in just a moment. 
Let me say quickly as well that um, if you're interested in talking to us at EDANCE, please do get in touch. Like we have lots of expertise in helping researchers identify potential areas within their own research work that may be suitable for funding. That's our gap analysis service. We also have vast experience helping researchers edit and get their work in shape for submission, grant editing and pre grant review services so please get in touch with us and maybe take advantage of those as well and of course we can help with lots of presentation aspects one area where we have some recent expertise is helping people identify european funding mechanisms that may be suitable for them to move to different areas you don't have to be based in europe to apply for funding from the european union you want to move to europe for example or you want to partner with a European research group. So all of these kinds of things we certainly can help you do. And let me say as well, don't forget that we have this free gift we mentioned at the beginning of our presentation today. If you wish to avail yourself of any of our EDANCE services, you certainly can. There's a funding-10 discount code that you can enter into our site. You can also, by going to learning.edance.com, um, you can sign up for free access to all of our Learning Lab contents, learning.edance.com funding hyphen 10. And as we mentioned already at the beginning of this presentation, listening back to this webinar, this training today, um, please do sign up there on that link that you can see on the screen. And with that, I will hand over to Scott. Um, we're gonna have a short game, which is always uh, much appreciated. If you want to know more, here are our contact details, take a screenshot of this slide. Um, funding-10 is your 10% discount code if you would like to have a look at any of our services. Get in touch with us if we can help. Scott. Great. Thanks so much, Gareth. And thanks to all of you for coming today and taking time out of your busy morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is there for you. I really appreciate it and we appreciate your questions. It helps us to understand better what your needs are and how we can help researchers with our training. So thank you. And for today's game, uh, just go to kahoot.it. I put the link there in the chat window in the bottom right, and there's a PIN number there. I can see we've got some players coming already. So we'll give it a, just a minute to give everyone a chance to join the game. So again, kahoot.it. The link's down there in the chat window. And we'll start in about one or two minutes. In the meantime, feel free to check us out at learning.edons.com. If you have any questions about our training, uh, you can email Gareth and myself and our team at learninglab at edons.com. And uh, feel free to come and sign up for two weeks of free Learning Lab, as Gareth mentioned. So that's learning.edons.com slash funding hyphen 10. Oh, we have some more players coming in enjoying the game. That's great. And if you have any questions about our services, you can also reach us at global at edons.com. Or if you're joining us from here in Japan, it's japan at edons.com. Great. Some more players coming in. Excellent. Let's give it one more minute. Okay, great. Good. More and more players coming in. Excellent, let's give it one more minute. Okay, can everyone see my game screen? Excellent, okay. I think we're almost ready to start. We still have a few players coming in. Okay, looks like we're ready to start the game. It's a short quiz today, just seven questions prepared by Gareth and myself. So let's begin. Here we go. Is everybody ready? Oops, oh, still one or two more joining, so we'll give it just a few more seconds.
Okay, good luck, everyone. Let's start the game. Here we go. And let's start. Okay, welcome to our Kahoot. Let's start the quiz. This is a multi-select question. There may be more than one correct answer. When starting to write a funding application, which of the following is important? A good idea that relates to a clear question, a clear strategy for completion, some preliminary results, or a set of good-looking illustrations. More than one of these may be correct. Choose all the answers that you think are correct. Okay, great. Well, the answer is all of these are important for your funding application. Excellent. And I can see seven of us got the correct answer on this one. Nice. Okay, good. Let's go on to our next question. Oh, congratulations to Fahad for being the fastest to answer there. Question number two. This is a puzzle question. You need to drag the blocks into the correct order. So these are the elements of a successful funding application. Put them into the correct order, please. You can click on a block and drag it around to put it in the correct place. What is the sequence or the order of a successful funding application? Oh, time's up. It's a tricky question. Let's see, our fastest respondents were Ut, Fahad, and Jonas. Congratulations to you. Let's go on to the third question. Another multi-select question. There may be more than one correct answer. Which of these are essential information to include in your grant application? Dissemination, credentials, background, plan. Which of these are essential for your grant application? Three, two, one. And time's up. The answer is background and plan. Great, I can see most of us got the correct answer for this one. Nicely done. Who was fastest here? Ooh, Fatma moving up the leaderboard. Nice work. Okay, let's go to our next question. Question four. What's the best way to show your review panel that you that your proposal can succeed, excuse me, a little typo there. Your proposal can succeed. Pad out your CV with articles related to the project. Include lots of pictures of your previous students and teams. Include some preliminary results to get the panel's interest. Name drop some important researcher you recently met. Well, the most important one here is to include some preliminary results. You wanna pique their interest and get them interested in your proposal. Who had the fastest reply here? Looks like it was Abida. Great work. All right, a couple more questions to go. Three more questions to go. Here's question five. This is a multi-select question. Pilot studies are important because they validate your study hypothesis, they demonstrate your expertise and technical efficacy, or they are a good way to spend department money. Okay, time's up. Best answers here are, well, actually, I think the first two are correct. I'm not sure about the third one. <laughs> uh, validate your study hypothesis and demonstrate your expertise, I think should be the two correct answers here. Let's see who got this one right. Oh, we've got Mame moving up the leaderboard. Nice work. We still have our top four here, Fahad, Abida, Jonas, and Mame. Let's go on to our next question. Question six, which is the best problem statement. Why are birth rates declining in rural areas of Saudi Arabia? What is the impact of local government policies on rural Saudi Arabians? How do local government policies affect birth rates in rural Saudi Arabia? Which is the best problem statement of the three?
Great, looks like 15 of you got the correct answer here. Nice work. It's this one. How do local government policies affect birth rates in rural Saudi Arabia? The first one, a little bit too broad of a question, as is the second option. This one is the most specific and makes the best problem statement. Let's go on to our leaderboard. We've got, oh, Coyote moving up onto the leaderboard at position five. Last question, everyone. Question seven, here we go. It's another puzzle question, so please put the grant writing components into the correct sequence. State the problem and objectives. Describe the methodology and expected results. Review the background and state the significance and implications. How would you put these into the correct order for your grant writing? Okay, five seconds left. 